God, I've been asleep for so long. I better check my YouTube account and see what's happened. What's happening on YouTube right now? Oh, YouTube is literally on fire right now. That's good to know. What are we at? Apocalypse like five now? Cool. So, yeah, I've been away so long I've missed some of the crucial time frames for uh, reviewing certain games. Obviously I post here and there, but that was just kind of keep the channel alive. Uh, I just kind of been busy and stuff, so sorry about that. Uh, there is games I'd absolutely love to do, so that's kind of where I got the idea for this review. A whole mega review of the end of the year games that I really wanted to do but missed. Uh, one of them's kind of a secret, kind of not. If you've seen the thumbnail or if you've seen the description or whatever, or the tags. But if not, wait until the end and you'll see what it is. It'll be a super secret surprise, except for when it's not. So this particular review is Nintendo exclusive, mostly because of the fact that my capture is having some problems with the PS4 and such, and I'm just kind of like lazy and I don't want to fix it. I'll fix it next year and I'm like, yeah. So if I did miss any games, I'll try to get to them next year. I won't make any promises, but I will try. Um, so for now, this is Nintendo exclusive since it was the only one I could record stable footage on. But, uh, also, the thing is, I missed a lot of games on the console itself, so the ones that I'm going to be reviewing are fantastic to play and experience, and I would not give them a bad reputation, so, you know, I, I don't think I can. I think the Nintendo fanboys would come after me and break my balls if I did, because they're not even bad games anyway. They're, like, sub-decent. Some of them are amazing, but most of them are, like, decent. So anyway, guys, sit back, grab something Christmassy or New Year'sy, some leftover turkeys, some decaying grandma, I don't know. Enjoy the review. God, out of all the games I've experienced this year, Nier Automata, Persona 5, and the new Wolfenstein, there's just one company this year that has risen above all the rest. A company that... Well, I had one foot in the grave and was almost lost to the ages, but it got saved by the Holy Grail of consoles. And that company, of course, is Nintendo. Now, I kind of want to give a little bit of a side story here. The P PS Vita is a good alternative if you're looking for something in the portable games market. PlayStation and Sony didn't really support this console as much as they should have, but it has a decent roster of games for people who are a fan of like uh, JRPGs and like visual novels and stuff. So if you're like interested in stuff like murder mysteries or horror or stuff like that, check out Danganronpa 1, 2, another episode. I think they're on PS4 now as well. Or check out uh, Persona 4 Golden, that's exclusive to the console. Fantastic series, if you didn't get to play it on PS2, check that out. But the poor baby died basically this year. And I'm just sad to see it kind of go because of the Switch. But unlike the less supported Vita, Nintendo doubled down on the market it had already dominated, which was of course the portable market, but it somehow kept its name in the whole console game with its hybrid console. Personally, I'd kind of call the Switch like a laptop equivalent of a console, offering kind of the power of a home console, but in a thin yet still rather large portable machine. I mean, you're not going to fit it in your pocket. I've tried, but... It's just not gonna happen. That's why I generally carry around a bag or something for it. Ironically, I carry it around in a PlayStation bag. <laughs> it's not even been a year and the console has a massive library filled with some of the best games on the market. And some of the most crucial games for a Nintendo console. Be them Nintendo made or not, from Skyrim to Splatoon to Mario. The Switch offers a multitude of games and genres and experiences for every new type of gamer, or old. Be it a Nintendo fanboys, a budding gamer, a hardcore gamer, the Switch has a game for you. And I'm going to be going over three of the games it offers that I haven't had time yet to review. These games range in genre from open sandbox to shooter to RPG, so there's a little bit of something for everybody. If so, if you're interested in any of those, you can... Um, you can skip to these timestamps I'll probably have up here on the screen or maybe in the description. I'm not sure. If you don't see them on the screen, just check the description. Um, and don't worry, these reviews will be relatively spoiler-free. Delving into maybe the first one or two hours of each game at most, I'll try to avoid any crucial story elements or anything like that. And 
I will have to. I'll, I'll may I may or may not touch on some little minor things. So if you're uncomfortable with that, just I would say switch off now and maybe watch this after you've seen the games. Uh, so now's your chance to turn away. So let's get started. Let's start off with Super Mario Odyssey. A Mario game on a Nintendo console? Of course it has to be done. Every Nintendo console since the very first one has always had a Mario game, but this one makes the genre fresh again. While it does owe its success to the predecessors like Super Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, this game brings its own legacy to the table alongside them. It's open, wide worlds filled to the brim with secrets, treasures, and easter eggs for you all to find, all give you one big giant nostalgia trip for any older Nintendo fan from composition, art, sound design, to even some of the entire levels being references or callbacks to previous Mario titles or even Donkey Kong titles, funny enough. Now in this one, as most Mario games, the story does come second to everything else. There, it's there for all to experience and enjoy, and I, I actually have to admit I do quite enjoy the uh, sidekick in this one, Cappy. But, you know, nobody plays Mario for the story. At least I don't. One thing I have heard though from some people is that they complain about the sheer number of moons or stars or whatever you want to call them scattered around the game. In total you can obtain 999 moons and 836 of those can be found lying throughout the world. Some people feel that's just way too many to be lying out in the open and to be taken, but the thing is, I have to disagree with this because there's enough difficult ones to justify the easy ones. Kids in particular, young, particularly young kids, play this game. I, I know this for example because my little brother plays this game. And those sort of people may struggle with the more difficult challenges, so having the occasional more easily obtainable moons is crucial for the, one of their key demographics. And there's enough, as I said, to justify that easy. It's similar to the uh, assist mode that they have in this game that's kind of different. It's for the easier kids who, who, who struggle with these sort of games. Now one thing I can really emphasize, and I, I don't stress this lightly, is the sheer happiness this game gave to me to play. I've never stopped having fun all the way through this game, and I know you will feel the same way if you play it. I couldn't wipe the grin off my face. It was so fun. I haven't even fully finished the game. Like, I've, I have beat the story mode, I've beaten all the extra story modes, and that's another thing. The game actually gives you more stuff to do after you beat it, which which means there's just so much to do. Like, I'm, I'm around the, uh, the 7-800 mark for, for moons, so... Uh, Hopefully I'll be able to beat it soon, and I'll be able to see you guys beating it too. So I won't go too much into uh, the post-game stuff, but you're going to find yourself over the moon with this Mario game. I give it an 8 out of 10. Up next we have Splatoon 2. Now this one, this one hurts me, because I, I felt conflicted. It's a fantastic game, no doubt about it. But it's clearly not a fully fledged sequel to the, the original Splatoon, it's more like Splatoon 1.5. The characters are vibrant, exotic, and all unique, and don't get me wrong, it's just... It's just not diverged enough from the original. There's only one real extra play mode, aside from the ones in Ranked and stuff, and even sometimes that is closed. And I hate that, it should just be open 24-7. Even the story is practically the same premise, but with just another character being missing and blah blah blah, I won't go into it fully. Now the multiplayer is really good and really fun. And just like the first one, but aside from new maps and rank modes and a few new guns, uh, nothing much has really changed. For a more casual Splatoon player like myself, the leveling feels rather slow. In the original I felt like I was leveling up much faster than I did in this one. I don't know what that is, maybe that's just me, but... I've honestly just found myself kind of at like a low rank. I'm at rank 9, so I don't even have access to ranked mode yet. And those ranked modes are locked out to me now, so I'm missing half the game just because the game is kind of slow to level. And I'm not playing poorly, it's just that the game kind of levels you up slowly. 
However, I really found myself liking the new mode, the Salmon Run. If only it had a little more map diversity and didn't close every five fucking seconds, I'd say it's a perfect addition to the game. It certainly fits the world, and it just feels like a good diversion from the original, and it's a new mode that's completely out of balance, because it's like, Splatoon is generally about painting the map like with your ink. This game is about killing certain characters, so it kind of takes the, the premise and shifts it, which I like. It's something that I like with alternate game modes. I'm just sad that we didn't see more of that. So all in all, this game is just a rehash of the original, and honestly, and this is me being honest, I don't blame them. The first game did well relative to Wii U sales, but the Wii U sold poorly as a home console. So not many people got to experience this game, and it was a great game. So I'm sadly one of the people who experienced the game, so now my experience was diminished. But I can see brand new players just absolutely loving this game if it's their first experience of the Splatoon series. And that's just the way it is. I mean, like, there's a lot of stuff in this game I do love, don't get me wrong, I don't hate this game. Like, I, I can't not mention the idols, like Marina and Pearl, great, love them. 10 out of 10, Pearl's forehead, 50 billion out of 50 billion. But Marina and Marie for life, pure, pure, pure beans. Just gotta get that out of the way. Although, on its own, I'm gonna have to give this game a 6 out of 10. Not a bad game, and it gets a lowered score because of the fact that it's so similar to the original, but they need to branch out if it ever gets another sequel. Otherwise, these squids are just gonna be left to drown. Now, Finally comes the last game in the review, guys. The super, super secret, ultra mega, super de duper secret thing. I'm not good at words. Lastly is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I think I got this one closest to its time frame, more than any of the others. Now, this is one of the ones that I'm... I'm relatively new to, I mean, as a, as a series. My last Zeno Saga, I call it Zeno Saga, I know that's a series of the games within the Zeno world or whatever, I'm just gonna keep calling it the Zeno Saga. My last Zeno Saga game was way back in the early 2000s with Zeno Gears, and that game was amazing. I will note that I'm like only about 30, 35, 36 hours or that into the game, uh, at the time of writing at least, but I'm still having mechanics explained to me at this point in the game. Like, I don't mind that, and I'm kind of one of the people who likes to experiment and figure out stuff on my own, but the game will explain a load of specific shit to you and then just not explain the rest. And I'm just, I don't like that. Either explain it all to me or explain none of it to me. That's how you do it. You can't just explain half the game to me and then just be like, hey, good luck, go find the rest of the game. And it's not a bad game by any means, it's just it needs to stop telling me what the fuck can do. <laughs> I'm not a big fan though of the auto attack mechanic, I much prefer control over my attacks and just being allowed to control the character in general, like I'm, I mean you're allowed to move the character around and stuff and you get to choose which abilities to use and all that and that's fine, but I prefer like being able to just hit my sword with my own control rather than just having the character do it on a whim like he's on autopilot. I do like the I do like some of the combat mechanics though, so I won't get I won't bash it completely, but it's just kind of diminished experience. Now this game seems massive. Obviously I'm still relatively low leveled, I'm around the 30s, around that. And I'm in one of the earliest cities. I I'm the third Titan, I don't know whenever. That's that's the third Titan. That's where I am at the moment. I think I'm moving on to the fourth. Now, I can already get a scope for how big this game is. Like, this seems huge. And I'm glad it does, because it's it's like... I love big open world JRPGs like this. They're just always so fun to play. And, I mean, the characters are completely, like... They're, they're completely cliched, but they're cliche in a good way. They, they're endearing, they're wholesome, there's some characters you hate, there's some characters you love, there's some characters you just you just cry over because they have sad backstories and such. I won't go into it, but they're sad. I kinda get a bit of a Pokemon vibe off the game though, as I started getting into it later on, collecting blades and all that. I do as well love the aesthetics of the game. Like if I were to see a Pokemon game, like kind of, I know I know I've got Pokemon on the brain, but if I were to see a Pokemon game on the Switch, I'd want it to be kind of like this, like a huge open world in the anime style like the show with kind of like 
all around real time battles of Pokemon and shit. That would just be so cool. It it it's like just so visually like stunning the game and it kind of really shows off the power of the Switch and how with, with enough like knowledge of the console you can actually make some huge games on this tiny little box. Obviously it's very anime-esque with uh, the voice acting sadly being similar to some of the older 90s animes where it's like subpar to like pretty good at best. Some characters are good at vo uh, have good voices but others just don't sound like they belong in voice acting. I mean, like, there's this one, the main character himself at first, it took me a while to get used to his voice, but at first, I just didn't think it was a good voice for the character. I mean, his, his expressions weren't very reminiscent of what the character was emoting throughout a lot of the story and throughout a lot of the cutscenes. It felt like it took away some of the experience that I would have experienced if they had have chosen somebody far more suited towards uh, professional voice acting, or anime voice acting in particular. Uh, a lot of the combat dialogue too is very repetitive and grinding, oh god, the grinding. It's so tedious. Not to mention, uh, some, thanks to some designer jerks, and I understand why they did this, but it's, it's still a dick move. They put like level 80s and 90s in like some of the kitty baby tutorial areas, and I hate them for that. <laughs> The amount of fucking times I died trying to get past some of those monsters, oh. But all in all, as far as RPGs go, this is a really fun one, especially for the Switch. It's got that Japanese quirk I often enjoy in RPGs and JRPGs, but uh, the thing is, you see, I'm coming, I'm coming into this as I'm playing Final Fantasy XV. I've got two games where it's like, one game's really fucking amazing visuals and amazing story stuff, combat's shit, but like, story's good. And then I've got one game where the combat's fucking amazing, the characters are really good, but the story is shit. And it's just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know why we can't have, we can, why we can have one and not the other in this case. Uh, but the combat in Final Fantasy XV, fucking, oh, if it was like, if it was like that in Xenoblade, oh man, this would be like an instant nine. You know, I feel like it kind of diminishes my experience in terms of the confusing controls and the mechanics and the occasional leveling roadblocks. I feel like I don't have that in the other game. And all in all, it's still a recommended game for the Switch. Don't get me wrong, don't let my experience of the combat controls destroy you, uh, like your high hopes for this game. Uh, like, I give it a 7 out of 10 from what I've experienced so far. It's actually, it's actually made me cry, it's made me, it's moved me, this game. It's, it, and that's, that's what a game needs to do. It needs to move you in a way. A way that you've never experienced before, and I'm just glad I've, I've experienced this game so far. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna see it all the way through. So that's, that rating's not set in stone. Once I finish this game, I'll give a more definitive one, maybe in the comments. Or maybe I won't at all, you know? Maybe I'll forget. That's just the kind of person I am. But guys, that'll do it for all of the reviews. We got through all three of them. I know some of them were shorter than others, and it wasn't exactly a ridiculously long video, but you know, I'm glad with what it was. Overall, the Switch is a console I hope that sticks around for the next four or five years, and I hope they continue to support it like they've been doing for the past nine or ten months. Even if it were to just hang around for three years or so, I'd be happy. It's got such a huge lineup already, and they've already announced another Legend of Zelda game. I don't know if it's going to be on the Switch, but they've announced it's in development, and they've announced, like, so much shit. Like, the new Bayonetta, and all, oh, and the new Metroid, oh, we've got so many good games to look forward to. So that'll do it for me this year, guys. It's been a good first year, or, well, it's not my first year, but it's been a good, it's a good first full year, you know, where I've kind of been doing everything throughout the whole year. I know I disappeared for a while, but I kind of explained that earlier. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this more often next year, you know? I'll continue to support this channel as much as I can, and I hope you do too. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. In fact, if you want to wish me an extra Merry New Year, you can subscribe. I know I don't generally ask for that, but I've just kind of been thinking about it, and I kind of need more subscribers, and I kind of need more people to watch my videos. So, um, if you'd like to share it around even, I'd appreciate that. Show your friends who are interested, or maybe if you want them to buy a Switch, maybe head them, head them over my way. I'm always, I'm always advertising my Switch to people I, I come across on the street. Totally what I'm doing. But anyway guys, that'll be it from me, so I'll see you next year. Bye!